everyone. Welcome to Glam Dunk. My name is Becca, and on Glam Dunk, I tell you all about the biggest, most memorable moments sports history has to offer while I do my makeup. Thank you so much for being here and for watching this video. I hope you love it. If you don't know who I am, like I said, my name is Becca. I'm a sports journalist, and the idea for this channel, Glam Dunk, actually came to me in a dream. I know, cheesy, but both sports and makeup are scenes that I absolutely love, and I believe that this dream was telling me to do this. I am nervous, but I am excited about all that I am planning to do on this channel. Like I said, I'm a sports writer. I have a Bachelor of Arts degree in uh, Journalism and Media Studies from San Diego State University. Go Aztecs. And I live in the Bay Area in California. I'm an A's, Warriors, 49ers, and Sharks fan. I also have a cat named Curry who is sleeping under me right now. She's named after Steph Curry. Anyways, let's get into today's story. 20 years ago today, on September 11th, 2001, I was in kindergarten. My mom dropped me off at school in California and overheard my teacher saying she was trying to get a hold of a friend in New York. And my mom was a bit confused that she didn't think anything of it. And when she got home, my grandpa called her and told her to turn on the news because New York was on fire. 20 years ago today, on September 11th, 2001, a series of four coordinated commercial airliner terrorist attacks took place against the United States. The first plane to hit was American Airlines Flight 11. It was flown into the North Tower of the World Trade Center in Lower Manhattan at 8.46 a.m. 17 minutes later, at 9.03 a.m., the World Trade Center South Tower was hit by United Airlines Flight 175. Both towers collapsed within an hour and 42 minutes. American Airlines Flight 77 crashed into the west side of the Pentagon in Virginia at 9.37 a.m. United Airlines Flight 93's target was the White House, yet the plane's brave passengers attempted to regain control of the plane from the hijackers and instead crashed in a field in Pennsylvania at 10.03 a.m. The attacks resulted in 2,977 fatalities, over 25,000 injuries, and substantial long-term health consequences, as well as $10 billion in infrastructure and property damage. To this day, 9-11 remains the deadliest attack in human history and the deadliest incident for firefighters and police officers in history. Now, I'm not going to get into all the horrific details of that day, since it's the 20th anniversary and today's already a very sad day. I want to talk about something a little lighter um, that brought a lot of hope and light to our country after these attacks. This isn't about politics. This isn't about the hate crimes that occurred after 9-11. Although those things are very relevant and important, I wanna talk about something much less important in the grand scheme of things, something that brought people of all colors together during such a horrific time in history. So this is the story of the 2001 World Series and how baseball helped to heal our nation. At around 11 a.m. on September 11th, 2001, MLB Commissioner Bud Selig, who had just visited the World Trade Center five days ago, by the way, made an announcement that the day's slate of games was canceled. At this point, no one cared at all about baseball, understandably, after watching these events unfold across the country. Even ESPN had suspended its programming and began showing news footage of the attacks. The next morning, shock was still in the air, obviously, but the MLB is a business and they had to begin the process of determining when it would be appropriate for them to begin playing again. Players and managers were exhibiting mixed emotions. Some wanted to return to normalcy, while others believed that sports were absolutely not a priority right now. Arizona Diamondbacks pitcher Randy Donson said, quote, we're talking about life and death. We're not talking about wins and losses. It's completely understandable if all sports shut down for a while, unquote. Now, the NFL season was just kicking off around this time as well, like Johnson mentioned all sports. And the NFL announced on September 13th that they would be postponing all of Sunday's games that weekend. Former NFL commissioner Pete Rozelle had said that he regretted not canceling the Sunday games after the assassination of President John F. Kennedy in 1963 and neither the NFL nor the MLB wanted to have any regrets about 9-11. Later in the day on September 13th, Bud Selig announced that play would resume on Monday, September 17th, with the 91 postponed games being made up the week of October 1st. 
Now, many MLB players were stranded in different cities after air travel had been suspended due to the attacks. So now they had to find their way to where they needed to be playing in just a few days, and they needed to get back in a baseball mindset after witnessing the deadliest attack on our country of all time. The 2001 MLB playoffs began on October 9, 2001. The ALDS matchups for the Oakland A's versus the New York Yankees and the Cleveland Indians against the Seattle Mariners. The NLDS matchups were between the Atlanta Braves and Houston Astros and Arizona Diamondbacks and St. Louis Cardinals. The ALCS began on October 17th between the New York Yankees and the Seattle Mariners. And the NLCS began on October 16th between the Arizona Diamondbacks and the Atlanta Braves. The Yankees advanced to the ALCS after coming back from being down two games to zero against the A's. I will give them that one time pass. One time. I'm an A's fan. Couldn't tell. The 2001 World Series began on October 27th, 2001. The latest a World Series has ever started before. The series matchup was the New York Yankees versus the Arizona Diamondbacks. At this point in time, the Yankees had 26 World Series titles to their name, having won their last championship the year before in 2000. Whereas the 2001 World Series was the Arizona Diamondbacks' first World Series appearance in franchise history. And it is actually still the Diamondbacks' only World Series appearance 20 years later. Game one took place at Bank One Ballpark, aka Chase Field, in Phoenix, Arizona. The game began at 5.02 Mountain Standard Time. In game one, the Yankees struck first. Derek Jeter was hit by a pitch and scored two batters later on a Bernie Williams double. Unfortunately for the Yankees, though, that's the only run that they would score in Game 1. Kurt Schilling, Mike Morgan, and Greg Swindle held the Yankees scoreless after that, and the Diamondbacks took Game 1 by a score of 9-1. to Game 2 also took place at Bank 1 Ballpark. The game began at 5.59 Mountain Standard Time. The Diamondbacks continued their strong start thanks to the big unit, Randy Johnson, who pitched a complete game shutout, allowing only four base runners and three hits while striking out 11. Now, Andy Pettit pitched a really good game, too. He retired Arizona batters in order in five of the seven innings that he pitched. But like I said, Randy Johnson pitched a complete game shutout, and the Diamondbacks took the series lead 2-0 to zero by a score of 4-0. to zero. Fun fact, though, game two of the 2001 World Series was the 1,000th 1, game played in MLB postseason history. For Game 3, the Yankees headed back to New York, down in the series two games to none. Now, when you think of September 11th, 2001, many of us remember the image of President Bush reading to those kids and getting word from Secret Service that America was under attack. I think most people think of that image when they think about our leadership on that day. But an image that has always stuck with me personally when I think about that time, in addition to that, is President Bush throwing out the first pitch at Old Yankee Stadium prior to Game 3 of the 2001 World Series. Whether you are a fan of George W. Bush or not, whether you agree with what he did as president or not, we all needed an inspiring moment, and that's exactly what he gave us. I personally see this moment as one of the most powerful, emotional, chilling, most goosebumpy moments that I can remember in not only sports history, but in American history as well. Now, Bush's security actually wanted him to throw out the first pitch in either Game 1 or Game 2 in Phoenix because they argued that it would be safer for the president, but he insisted that he throw out the first pitch in New York. If you hear jingling, my cat's taking a bath behind me. That's what that is. Earlier in the day before Game 3, Bush visited Ground Zero and um, the first responders there dealing with the aftermath of the attacks. 
When he got to the Yankees clubhouse, the Secret Service gave Bush a bulletproof vest to wear for the pitch. Um, and he then covered that up with a FDNY, Fire Department of New York, uh, jacket. So Bush went to the batting cages and began warming up for his first pitch. And in walks the captain, Derek Jeter, who actually just a couple hours ago got inducted into the uh, National Baseball Hall of Fame. So congrats to him and Larry Walker. I loved Walker's um, SpongeBob pin. Absolutely hilarious. And I love Jeter saying, uh, thank you to all the baseball writers, except the one of you who didn't go with me. <laughs> Classic Jeter. So in walks Derek Jeter, and he told Bush that he better pitch from the mound so he wouldn't get booed by the by the crowd. And which, if you don't know, that's not customary when you're throwing out the first pitch. You usually stand like halfway between the mound and home plate, because um, usually throwing from the mound is just too far for the average person. But Jeter thought he should just go for it. Jeter then told Bush famously, quote, but don't bounce it or they'll boo you. Unquote. When the president walked out of the dugout and onto the field, he was greeted by thunderous applause and USA chants throughout the crowd. From the mound, just as Jeter had suggested, President Bush threw a perfect strike over home plate to Yankees backup catcher Todd Green. Bush then became the first incumbent U.S. president to throw a World Series first pitch since Jimmy Carter in 1979. The president told MLB.com, quote, I had never had such an adrenaline rush as when I finally made it to the mound. I was saying to the crowd, I am with you, the country's with you. And I wound up and fired the pitch. I've been to conventions and rallies and speeches. I've never felt anything so powerful and emotion so strong and the collective will of the crowd so evident, unquote. Now, if you've never seen President Bush's first pitch, I highly recommend that you watch it. I will link it in the description box in case you have never seen it or in case you just want to watch it again. I will also link a 30 for 30 ESPN short on Facebook that is a perfect account of his first pitch and I highly recommend that you watch that as well. And also if you can find the HBO documentary Nine Innings from Ground Zero that is another great um, one as well that actually covers the entire 2001 World Series. So game three, as I'm sure you've realized by now, took place at Old Yankee Stadium on October 30th, 2001. The game began at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yankees pitcher Roger Clemens allowed only three hits and struck out nine in seven innings of work. And Yankees legend Mariano Rivera pitched the last two innings for the save. The Yankees won the game by a score of 2-1 and therefore cut Arizona's series lead to 2-1. Game 4 of the 2001 World Series took place on Halloween at Old Yankee Stadium. The game began at 8.23 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Orlando Hernandez started for the Yankees while Arizona started Kurt Schilling on only three days rest. Hernandez pitched six and one-third innings giving up four hits while Schilling went seven innings and gave up three hits. In the ninth inning, the Diamondbacks were leading, but the Yankees ended up tying the game, and therefore the game went into extra innings. At that point, when the scoreboard clock in Yankee Stadium passed midnight, the month of November began, and then there was a message on the scoreboard that said, Welcome to November Baseball. Mariano Rivera took the mound for the Yankees in the 10th and retired the Diamondbacks batters in order. With two outs in the bottom of the 10th, Derek Jeter became Mr. November. He hit a walk-off home run and the Yankees won the game by a score of 4-3, tied the series at 2, and guaranteed a trip back to Arizona. Game 5 took place again at Old Yankee Stadium on November 1st, 2001. The game began at 8.23 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, technically, they had already played a game on November 1st, but they were going to play another one. And I guess 10 innings the night before was not enough, so the Yankees and Diamondbacks decided to go 12 innings this time. Alfonso Soriano ended the game with an RBI single to give the Yankees a 3-2 victory and a 3-2 series lead as the series went back to Phoenix. 
Game six took place at Bank One Ballpark on November 3rd and began at 5.53 Mountain Standard Time. Randy Johnson pitched seven innings and struck out seven, giving up just two runs. The Diamondbacks set a World Series record with 22 hits and defeated the New York Yankees in the most lopsided postseason loss in 293 postseason games. This was since surpassed by a 16-1 to loss by the Boston Red Sox in 2018. But the Diamondbacks won the game by a blowout score of 15-2. to They evened up the series at three games apiece and set up a Game 7 for the ages between Roger Clemens and Kurt Schilling, who again was going to pitch on only three days of rest. Game 7 of the 2001 World Series took place at Bank One Ballpark on November 4th and began at 5.55 Mountain Standard Time. It was a matchup of two 20-game winners, Roger Clemens and Kurt Schilling. Roger Clemens, at 39 years old, became the oldest Game 7 starter in MLB history. The Yankees were leading into the ninth inning. They were so close, but spoiler alert, the Yankees lost. I know, right? September 11th is so synonymous with New York. So it's only fitting to think that their hometown hero Yankees won the World Series, right? But they didn't. The bases were loaded in the ninth by Mariano Rivera, which was rare. And on an 0-1 pitch, Luis Gonzalez hit a single that barely made it to the outfield grass over Jeter, plating a run, and the Diamondbacks walked off. To this day, this remains the last World Series to end on a walk-off of any kind. Randy Johnson and Kurt Schilling were named co-World Series MVPs. The 2001 World Series was the first World Series ever played in the state of Arizona or the Mountain Time Zone. It was the first championship for a far west state other than California. The Diamondbacks were the first major professional sports team from the state of Arizona to win a championship. It was also the earliest that a MLB franchise had ever won a World Series since the Diamondbacks had only existed for four years at that point. And the home team won every game in the series. In 2009, Game 7 of the 2001 World Series was chosen by Sports Illustrated as the best postseason game of the decade. Days after Game 7, the Yankees' loss ended up being life-saving for Yankees player Enrique Wilson. Since there was no Yankees parade, Wilson moved up his flight home to the Dominican Republic and therefore did not board American Airlines Flight 587 that crashed in Bell Harbor, Queens, killing everyone on board. I know, more plain tragedy. The 2001 World Series may not have had the ending that we all expected, but the Diamondbacks won their first and only so far World Series championship, which is something to celebrate in itself. Um, the Yankees did not win another World Series, though, until 2009, and that's their latest to this day, which it's been like 12 years, which is unheard of from the Yankees, really. So, Again, baseball is not what matters about this day. On this 20th anniversary of 9-11, I just want to say that if you lost someone on 9-11, I'm very sorry for your loss, and I'm thinking of you today. So many people were lost that day, um, so tragically, but something like baseball almost gave us our dignity back in a way. Like I said, whether you agree with George Bush and his politics or not, that moment of his first pitch was magical, and I believe the catalyst for that first Yankees win. The aftermath of 9-11 was not all kumbaya moments like that one was. Um, it was hard on all of us, some more than others. Um, people of different beliefs and different races were treated poorly as a result. And 20 years later, it's still a moment in history that we think about every single year. And it also means that I was in kindergarten 20 years ago, which means I'm getting older and that's scary. Again, check out those links in my description box so you can see visually those awesome moments that I talked about. Other than that, thank you so much for watching this video. I really, really appreciate it. Um, if you could subscribe, that would help me a lot as well. Um, I plan on doing many more sports videos, sports history, 
makeup videos on this channel and I would love for you to be a part of it. All of the makeup that I use today will be linked below in case you're curious about anything. Other than that, I will see you in my next video. Bye. If you have any tips for getting um, your foundation to sit right around your nose ring, please give them to me. This is something I've struggled with for years and it just never looks good on my super dry nose. So don't pay attention to that and don't pay attention to Mount Vesuvius on my, in between my eyebrows. At this point, oh, whoops, pumpkin cream cold brew break. Stop turning off.